You're listening to Art Happens Here, the podcast that explores the often curious and occasionally amazing art installations on, in, and around the campuses of Lansing Community College. I'm your host, Bruce Mackley. In today's episode, we will be discussing Iron and Steel, structural steel fabricator, LCC instructor Vern Messler is here to talk about what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. Vern has a, an, an extraordinary background. Um, I'm actually sitting here with a living legend. Um, 34 years as a structural steel fabricator. Um, 46 years as LCC's welding instructor. He's been a project manager uh, for the restoration of historic riveted bridges. Um, he's fabricated, designed and fabricated a number of um, ornamental iron sculptures. A list of his presentations, awards, and achievements is too long to list. I mean, it's just, it's vast. It's, uh, welcome to Art Heavens here, Vern. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you here. You know, yeah. we've, we've crossed paths over the years, and of course, you're on the, you're on the heavy hitting end of, of getting things done around here. Um, so it's, it's, it's thrilling talking to you and having you down here well, thank to, you. to share some thank of your you. experience. So, um, well, I'm just going to start out like from the beginning. Um, you've been here for a minute. What motivated you to uh, to get into steel? What was it? Was there somebody in your past? Was oh, it- I like that question. I really like that question. I, students, this is this is really the truth. Yeah, the students. They they. You know, how did you start your career in welding? And I said, well, one day the general foreman came out, or the general you know, foreman came out, the shop, and they needed somebody to sweep out the office and somebody to tack weld. And if I and you know, I got to do tack welding, if not, I would be teaching janitorial services, because <laughs> that's the way it was. You yeah. know, and you didn't. Uh, it wasn't inspired to become a welder, or you know. So, and from that, I uh, developed my skills in welding, and then uh, went into fit. I love fitting up. You know, taking a print, and I they, and I was primarily fit up heavy structural material. And then eventually became a foreman, and I, most of my career in steel fabrication we worked as a foreman in the heavy structural department. Actually, I see. Um, putting men to putting men to work, putting the stuff together, and I think that's why when I worked with the Calhoun County Historic Bridges, I was able to take all the what I learned at Lansing Community College, what I learned in steel fabrication, and I was also a materials manager and take all those skills and restore those bridges. <laughs> and I actually use all those skills a lot to some of these projects I did on West Campus. You know, uh, the first one you've been aware of is the Moon House. Yeah, mm -hmm. And uh, sure. that was uh, worked with uh, Jim Perkins. He was the architectural uh, instructor. And he had a student take a magnifying glass at that time mm -hmm in an 1895 picture and got the dimensions, come out with the dimensions to create a print. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you just run it through a computer and everything generates. Right. But that, and they drew it all up and he brought the print down to me in the welding lab and said, can you help, can you do this? Yeah. So I got some students together and uh, we, working off that print, uh, come up with <laughs> Darius Moon's uh, uh, architectural feature that uh, the people that owned the uh, house, I think they were named Small. They owned the Small's department store in Lansing. Mm -hmm. They felt in 1940s they felt that structure dated the house, so they scrapped it out. <laughs> really? And so we replicated it, and so now it's there. So that was my first project, working with students. I think that's what I really enjoy the most is. Getting, working with students and doing these type of things. Imparting the knowledge. Well, something that struck me in looking at you, sent me over your papers because I wanted to know more about you. Um, you have an associate degree from LCC. Um, associate degree uh, majoring in business and welding. Right. And your career is comprised of practically every facet of steel fabrication. You don't have a degree in metallurgy? No. Mechanical engineering, no. engineering in general. No. This is stuff that you picked up. Yes. You learned this stuff. Well, that's an interesting question because the fellow that uh, I need to talk to him, Joe Bezowitz, mm -hmm. 
they and I he was an instructor he taught metallurgy and heat treating mm -hmm. this if you you could be asleep in his class and learn something <laughs> he was an amazing good, huh? instructor yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a um, my skills in learning understand metal beyond welding it beyond hammering on it yeah. was uh, with Joe but not a degree in it but uh, it was part of the uh, Lansing Community College in the technic part had a great, uh, and they teach continue to teach metallurgy, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so some of the industrial skills are in enhanced by coming you know through Lansing Community College. I can't imagine the uh, evolution of technology that you witnessed over the years, <laughs> um, because you know welding we marketed you know i work in marketing here mm -hmm. um you know dr knight our previous president was very big into promoting the welding program and we should show pictures of underwater welding i didn't know there was such a thing <laughs> um you know welding in outer space you know all the friction welding all this you know science fiction bordering mm -hmm. on you know mm -hmm. that type of thing um well, I, I personally, I feel like I missed out by not taking your class. I really could have benefited <laughs> as, a, like, as an artist and designer. Um, you're just an extremely unique combination of technical expertise, creativity, and overall practical experience. Well, it isn't, it isn't too late, Bruce. You can come down any time and we'll put you behind a well. You know, I just I, I did. I, I enrolled for a creative welding course, and the, dark, the helmet freaked me out. I, I couldn't get acclimated plus my son was there and it was just we weirded out and, and backed out of it you know i seemed like felt like i was out of my element but man it really would have been great um well you've been here um welding instructor you're also the project manager for the restoration of historic riveted bridges right now is that just in michigan or is that nationwide well i had um uh, uh, <laughs> interesting uh position i I was teaching uh, a, uh, a welding beginning class here, and Dr. Frank Hatfield taught civil engineering at MSU, and I still work with him a lot, and have breakfast from time to time, talk about bridges and steel. Mm -hmm. And he attended my class uh, because he, want, he had students that worked on the bridge contest, you know, the, um, it's not at historic bridges, but engineering students would construct these bridges. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to save a bridge years ago in Jackson County, and I couldn't do it. I tried to get LCC, and they, you know, just couldn't do it. And um, so I had to let it go, and I, in every class, I always talk about it. And Dr. Hatfield, he said, well, Vern, if you want to save old bridges, there's a guy down in Calhoun County that wants to save 15 of them and put them in a park. Really? And so I had, we immediately went down, my wife and I went down and uh, talked to a fellow by the name of Dennis Randolph. He was managing director of Calhoun County. Mm -hmm. And his vision was to have a park with 15 of these things. And he already had two of them in battle, you know, he already had two of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, signed me up as an independent, I told him I'd do it. I signed him up. As, signed me up as an independent contractor, and I started in 1995, and worked for 10 years and restored five bridges. So these were like exhibition exhibits, They're, living exhibits that right, people can that's visit. What, and yeah, that's it. what they is. Uh, and actually, it's um, uh, Dr. Robinson. Hmm. One of the first things he did was go down there and visit the bridges. I believe it. <laughs> I saw the pictures of our current president, uh, Dr. Steve Robinson heavily fascinated he's yeah. he's he's very curious and inquisitive all over the board but yeah. just i saw him operating the the riveting gun it was during a demonstration <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 rivet hammer right he um yeah and he's fascinated with this bridge across the river down here uh you know that railroad bridge so mm -hmm. you now he took a quite an interest in it and uh, uh we got him down there <laughs> got him down here well i think he he did a uh we show, showed him how to do it. And then the second time, we had a, a Society of Industrial Archaeology, and they were uh, come down, and we did a demonstration with them, and he introduced riveting to him. You know, he did the first really? uh, couple, of three rivets yeah. and did a little talk. So How cool is that? Uh, so, he, um, so that was uh, – and, and, and I really appreciate the fact that, uh, first of all, that – the management 
has taken, you know, continue to take an interest in what we're doing. But the staff, the welding staff, Roger Morrison, mm-hmm. Jeff Haynes are for the first two, and now there's um, Scott Paul, uh, lead instructor now, and then mm-hmm. uh, Jeff Haynes, Jeff Seeley, and uh, so these, but Roger Morrison and Jeff Haynes, when I left uh, Calhoun County, I took the rivet equipment with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, they gave me some of the stuff, and some of the stuff I I had, you know, I owned my own, and I brought it down and uh, worked with Roger, and we run a uh, some demonstrate, you know, working on it, and eventually uh, we uh, developed the machine equipment. Doctor Knight eventually bought uh, the rivet equipment we're using, and then we hold put on, on hold workshops. on, just a real quick second. Yeah. Did you invent something? I mean, did you like come up with a new oh, yes. methodology? Yeah. So you can, okay, back it up a click. You, you, you decided something wasn't working correctly. This is what I mean about your creative creativity <laughs> and human inquisitive nature. Anyway, can you just go into that just a little bit? Well, what was happening is when we were riveting, when you, when you rivet, so you, let's say you get a couple angles, you know, heavy duty angles and you put a series of holes in them and then you dry the rivets. Well, if you want to dry some more rivets than that, you have to take them out. If you know anything about riveting, and that's what a lot of these engineers don't understand, is that these rivets are very hard to take out. <laughs> very hard to take out. Why wouldn't they understand that? It seems, to me, it would seem like you angle grinder, forget it. You know, you'd have to use dynamite. You know, the practically, because, and yeah. what, so what Roger and these guys were doing, they were trying to, they do the hydraulic jack, they'd done everything to try. And then I come up with this idea of, okay, so let's, let's make a fixture where you can dry the rivets, take the fixture apart, dry some more, and knock the rivets out. People can see what they look like, yeah. put the fixture back together, yeah. and dry some more rivets. Showing so, the anatomy of the process. And so we kept, so uh, it's, uh, I had um, uh, Bethlehem uh, working with a, um, a historian out of Bethlehem Museum, and he built one. And he uh, puts on demonstration once in a while. So I'm trying to encourage more of the uh, educational. I know a few people in universities try, uh, that I've trained to rivet, trying to, you know, hopefully they'll be able to uh, build that fixture so they can yeah. keep training. I hope so, too. It yeah. sounds like it would be a really but great was, teaching uh, tool. It's in the, And <laughs> so these guys, they cut it down pat now. I just sat back. And, but, they'll, you know, every... So they put a demonstration on, there's a, an advanced class called the structural fabrication class I designed years ago. And I turned it over to Jeff Haynes and Scott Poe teach it now. Mm-hmm. But they have every semester, we, do, we have a rivet demonstration through uh, structural fabrication class. They introduce mm-hmm. the students to mm-hmm. probably the only <laughs> students, uh, any student, in it, whether it's a community college or university, that have experience with a rivet hammer and riveting process. And it's, um, so that's one of the things that, um, as I find this disappointing is the fact that uh, we don't, that <coughs> there's no major industrial museum in the United States that has a single thing about riveting. Really? Even though the buildings they're in are riveted. That surprises structure. me because it's the backbone. There's yeah. a, there's a um, I think it's in, Chicago it might be in New York City I just saw it online the other day it's in a it's in a some type of museum setting for maybe industrial America anyway you're familiar with the famous photo of the iron workers sitting on the oh yeah right and there's a sculpture and it's you know for those of us for those out there who are unfamiliar with this famous photo this thing just gives you the willies because (laughs) these guys that are so used to just walking along on these beams you know you know, hundreds of feet up in the air, they're all sitting on an I beam, on the suspended I beam, having lunch. They got their lunch boxes open and they're chowing <laughs> down there looking up, like, what's the big deal? Well, this place in New York has a, a beam because it's a tourist attraction. Right, right. You can come up with a group of people oh. and you can sit on it and they'll, they'll bring it up and there's a picture of the right. city behind oh. it to make it, to reenact right. it. And you can have your picture taken as a work at just. So there is a fascination with yeah, that. I mean, right. it, it goes very, very deep. Right. Um, so I had, um, you know, it's, it's disappointing. Um, I, I tried to, 
get your museums interested in it. Um, I might have some made some progress in the last maybe in the last week, tell you the truth. Yeah. But um, my wife and I, my wife planned a great trip, uh, a three week trip through the UK. And your wife is uh, was an instructor here, wasn't she? Lansing Community College math instructor, a very Man. successful math instructor. That's right. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, she's done a lot of projects or uh, little uh, projects with some of the things that we did in structural fab and riveting. See. But we went through this um, uh, <coughs> beautiful bridges. And in Manchester, the UK, we went through a museum that had this beautiful riveted building inside the riveted structures. Mm-hmm. And in, in the middle, they had a, in one uh, display, they had a, the original steam engine there. And I told my wife, I said, oh, they, I bet they've got some riveting displays here. And I went up to the desk and I said, I said you got anything on riveting? What's that? I said, your really? building is riveted. And she said, no, we don't. I said, well, don't feel bad. There's nobody in the United States that has it neither. That is astounding to me because I, I mentioned in a previous meeting, I, I was in Portland, Oregon a couple of times, and you can't help but not yeah. be blown away by these things, oh, these yeah. mo- monstrous bridges that are yeah. hundreds, thousands of rivets, and yeah. you walk through. Yeah. Now, something that has always fascinated me, regardless of whatever it is, in, in exploring this and learning more about the bridges, has there ever been anything, um, speaking of um, great ideas, that you uncover in your work and you look at the stuff that was done years and years and years ago and you go, this guy was brilliant. Look what he did. You know, or is it all uh, like standardized? I mean, I know there's blueprints and plans, but I remember hearing p- these stories of these guys that would fabricate the bombers for World War II and they would just come up with stuff on the fly. And they're like, 25 well, you, hit, you hit an interesting yeah and in what i'm trying to write about okay first of all there is and i keep preaching this all the time you can go in a library and you get hundreds and hundreds of books on the engineer that designed the structure mm-hmm. but there's not a single book about the, the fellow that actually men and women actually there of were course women, there were women yeah. that drove rivets and worked in uh, factories uh and um so um, there's not it's it's not there, and, and trying to uncover that information mm-hmm. is is very difficult. Even um, something something as simple, if you go on a bridge, you'll see what they refer to as, as an eye bar, okay. and there's a technique from making it. And there's I have found absolutely no historic record on how it, I know how it's done is now. It cast or but. There's, you know, it's forge welded. It's amazing, and I do have. Uh, that's one of the things I have an opportunity working at Lansing Community College. The staff down there has been working with me. Like I, you know, I need to. Mm-hmm. I'll take wrought iron, and I'll have them. They'll prepare it for me so I can investigate it and look at it and, and mm-hmm. write about it, mm-hmm. or the rivet process. And so it's been. Um, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that's a good question because that's exactly the issue that I'm trying to deal with because I see a lot of things on a bridge yeah. that's been fabricated and I haven't got a clue why, how it's been fabricated. But you know why. And, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and then there's, um, uh, there's a, <laughs> uh, if you look at a diagonal, long diagonal on a bridge, mm-hmm. and there's a technique, they're forge welded, and there's a punch mark. There, so there's a series of marks on there, fabrication marks on it. Mm-hmm. And I have had, and I've discovered these on a number of bridges around the country. These yeah. punch marks, and, okay. for, for, and there's I have uh, no documentation of why, what, what the punch marks were for, and why the, you know, why they're there. So it's another article I'm going to write up. Yeah. On. But anyway, it's necessity uh, that's a is the mother story of invention. It's not, uh, it's not there anymore. Yeah. I don't know what. Well, people were encouraged to think on their feet, you know, well, more than more than yeah. they do today. I think I, mean, I might be wrong. No, you know, it's 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 a good that's a good uh, what a lot of times you'll come up with a situation that you've got to solve a problem, but you don't write it down. You just do the job, just do it. and you know, just do it. and if you, <laughs> I've been in a situation in steel fabrication, if it, being a foreman or being a fitter. If you know, 
there's no such thing as it can't be done. You know, <laughs> you know if, if you go up to their boss and say, well, gee, I can't do that, you're going to be out frying hamburgers. <laughs> Yeah. So. Yeah. What did uh, I heard? Uh, well, Doctor Robinson said it's a poor uh, engineer that blames the tools or something along those lines. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To cut right yes. down to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yep. touching briefly, just to back up a minute, because um, on the uh, the war efforts and women working on these lines, um, the really short story. I was res- I restored a, a, a wood plane for my father in law. Mm-hmm. He loaned it to me, and it was it was a mess and. So I, rest- I completely brought it up to, to like brand new, and um, it was overbuilt. I mean, I looked it up, and uh, it seemed like it was never designed to fail. It was mm-hmm. like that before you, mm-hmm. people would design an obsolescence or, or what, what have you. And I was on a forum, and somebody mentioned that um, uh, Stanley, the company that made this back when, they're still around, I believe, um, they knew, <laughs> this is just... A, they they knew that that women were going to be making their planes because mm-hmm. their the workforce had joined the armed services mm-hmm. so they would come in so they designed the planes to be heavier because they figured the women wouldn't they would grind them down too much or waste <laughs> so they they tried to compensate for it on the front end and you know what they did fine yeah they did absolutely great <laughs> and so you have a number of these planes that are overbuilt oh. because the company thought right. anyway right. you know what i mean yeah. so I, I always thought that was an interesting story um well has there any been has there ever been um and i want to talk about your art maybe if i if i can have you back to talk uh, about <laughs> the art that you've created but the bridge thing is just so fascinating to me is there any single project that you can look back on that you're most proud of? And if so, why? why, why? Th- thinking back well, over the number of things. I, 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 I tell you what I enjoy doing. This is why I printed this stuff out. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done projects, <clears throat> and I've done this wall project, and I did, uh, uh, you know, um, and some other stuff here at Lansing Community College. <clears throat> But the thing I enjoyed the most doing was a creative welding. And, people, and my approach to creative welding was I wanted them to come up with an idea, to come in with an idea, and I'll help you convert it to steel. Yeah. I had a, that I had the most fun in doing, enjoyed. <clears throat> and so, and I think I mentioned the fact that this young, this fellow here. Oh, sure. And uh, he... Uh, he had uh, he did this ugly thing, b- big cut up a lot of material, waste a lot of it. And I told him, I said, you know, I said you're not using the steel in the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to take take the what steel represents or what it can what it can do. Its quality, its its its, it's t- uh, character. And so he went down and bought these spoons at Myers, I think probably, and he had some washers and he built and he really creative. And building this jewelry box for his his girlfriend. How about that? And uh, it it sort of reminds me of uh, Picasso's bowl, which comprises oh, yeah. of a seat, mm-hmm. bicycle seat, and handlebars. Yeah. And I what was interesting, his name was Ken, and I ran into him this year at uh, Scrap Fest down here in Lansing, sure. uh, which is amazing, North by the way. Lansing. Yeah. And he called me, hey, Vern, remember me? And he says he need, and he always remembered that um, I'm sure. box, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I also talk about the fact, you know, that like I said, I really enjoy. No, I didn't have, I never had uh, Jack Bergeron as as an instructor, as a student. Mm-hmm. But what Jack did. What's interesting? Now, he's very young, right there. Oh yeah, I know. I know Jack. <laughs> and he, um, he had, and I brought him down a few times to mm-hmm. my structure, my creative writing class, to, and with his sculpture because I wanted students. I said, "This is, this is what I mean by taking this this metal." It said, "You you don't make something that you can create with wood or create with clay or create with concrete. You take the the, the metal, the steel." And and what it can do, yeah. and that's what he did. He took he created. And it's definitely, uh, uh, definitely a, you could recognize Jack Bergeron just looking at that piece. Yeah. And it's just a it's um, pieces of rod and metal welded together and created that. 
structure. Yeah. So that's what I try to get, you know, think about when students come in and create a welding. So, so come in with your idea, and I'd like to help you make that. There was a, a type of fearlessness um, associated with Jack's work. Uh, it, truly, I mean, there was a daring that um, many creatives just don't possess or they possess in very short amounts. Jack seemed to have no um, shortage of it, and one of his creations is, resides outside of our former university center here, and it's, mm-hmm. I had all kinds of questions about how he did it, you know, innovating and thinking on your feet like that. Um, and the bull, the Picasso bull example that you showed there is, uh, today there's, um, this, what I see in any way in my feeds, a a movement in art where the artwork is designed to challenge your perceptions. (laughs) And what I mean by that is, well, there's a, there's a guy who's a sculptor, he sculpts in marble, he'll do like a pillow like a down pillow with mm-hmm. wrinkles and everything cut out of marble <laughs> and it looks like a pillow. I mean, you want to put your head on it. It's like that. It's like a, it just right. messes with your head a little right. bit. You know, there's, there's plenty of that that's going on with, with light and with steel and shadows and so on. People are just thinking further and further out. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I'd like to have you back if that's mm-hmm. okay, because that we bear, we didn't hardly touch on your artwork. And I just mentioned to you before this meeting, um, I was walking up a stairwell in our Gannon building, mm-hmm. and um, there's a portion in our, in our Gannon building on LCC's downtown campus where there's a very open double staircase, like a master staircase all the way up. And there are these, um, I see there's a picture on the table right there. There's these iron sculptures of various local landmarks up there, mm-hmm. intricately, beautifully designed things that this gentleman designed and made, and I want to talk about those because, as I mentioned, I, I looked at that Capitol Dome and I just, <laughs> I stopped. Yeah. I literally stopped in my tracks because taking it in and the detail and the gauging and the, the finishing, I just um, didn't look like anything done around here. Nothing against here, but right. it looked like something you'd see in Europe. or I don't know. You know what I mean? Well, so, yeah. I just, um, I, Dr. Gannon, um, he... Um, he, he's one that wanted this. He, he was going to start an industrial center, mm-hmm. and uh, this is supposed to be the introduction to it, you know. And so, uh, I one of the things that when I drew it all up, I drew it all up, scaled it up, and I knew had an idea what I wanted to do with the capital and the rest of the building. But the thing I, what I really liked about this project is when. Dot and when uh, Bill Dar said we're going to give it to Vern because he can get it done. Awesome, but if, with no nervousness there. No, were you nervous about that at all? Or you just no. no, you stepped right into it. No. Well, sir, we're we're a little short on time. We're going to wrap up, but if you don't mind coming back, I think we could keep rolling. Great, Vern Messler, uh, LCC steel fabrication instructor and uh, artist extraordinaire. Thank you for coming down for Art Happens Here. Okay, thank you. Art Happens Here is a production of LCC Connect. If you want to check out what I've been talking about, visit lccconnect.arc. Thanks for lending us your imagination.